So today we're going to be fixing one of the worst things that can happen to your website and that's the fatal error crash. So because it's a fatal error there's a whole bunch of different variations but they all follow the same process of how to fix them. So without further ado let's get started. Okay, so there are many variations to the fatal error. So like the one that you see on the screen, this one's actually quite helpful because it actually gave you the location of where that error occurred. So you know that it happened to be inside one of the plugins. Okay, so over here you can see that this is the fatal error. And then over here, it highlights it in bold is the location of which file in which plugin on what line that the error occurred. So that can save you a whole bunch of time in trying to find where the error is happening because it actually is giving it to you right over here. So in this example, what you do is you'd go into your cPanel hosting like I'm gonna show you later in this video. So you would know that it's this plugin over here and that's the one that you would have to reinstall manually into your WordPress website to make everything back to normal. And I do say reinstall because generally what you have to do is give an updated version of that plugin. There are going to be situations that the update is the reason why there is a crash and you'd have to roll back into an older version of that plugin but nine times out of ten it's because the plugin is too old and you just have to have an updated version of it so in that case you just delete the old one and then just install the new one in its place and then everything that you have in your website should just carry on like it was before the crash happened but in this video in this example we are going to be fixing the worst fatal error and that's the one that gives you no explanation as to why the error actually happened so over here you can see that there was just a critical error and it gives nothing about why it's actually happening so the first thing that we're going to need to do is we're going to have to log into the cPanel of our WordPress website because you have to have access into the files themselves in order to fix the problem that's causing this so once we've logged into cPanel we're going to be presented with this back end over here and we're going to go into the file manager so here in the file manager we're going to go into the public HTML folder so here in the public HTML folder here you can see all the files and folders of our WordPress website so in order to find where the fatal error is coming from we're going to have to start somewhere and most of the time you're going to find the fault is lying within one of the plugins it's a bit more rare that it's a theme that's causing it and it's even more the case if it's going to be the WordPress files themselves so most of the time it's going to be one of the plugins so let's go into the plugins folder to find that you're going to have to go into WP content and here inside the WP content you can see that there's the plugins in the themes folder and this is where we're going to be doing the majority of our work so the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to rename the plugins folder now remember what I'm saying here is just to rename the plugins folder we're not going to delete it we're not going to move it we're just going to rename it and test to see if our wordpress website starts working again and if wordpress starts working again then we know that the fault is 100 percent within one of the plugins itself so here we're just going to save time and we're going to rename the plugins folder to say something else so in order to do that we just go to the plugins folder we right click on it and we say rename and what i'm going to call this is just plugins underscore backup i'm going to say rename file and now you can see that I haven't touched anything, I've just renamed it. So let's go into the front end again, and we're gonna refresh there and test to see if the fault is coming from one of the plugins. So here's the front end, I'm gonna say reload. Okay, so now that you can see that the once I had renamed the plugins folder to plugins backup, you can see the WordPress website has started to work. Now obviously because the plugins have all been hidden, it's not working properly, but at least you have access into the WordPress system. So now we know that the fault is 100% from the plugins. If your WordPress website is still displaying the fatal error, then the next option you could try to do is rename the themes folder. So what you do is you go to the themes folder, you right click on it and say rename, and then give it a new name. For me over here in this example, I'm and say themes underscore backup I say rename and then you refresh and your error is going to be either the themes or the plugin and again nine times out of ten it's going to be within the plugins folder itself okay so now that we know that the error is coming from the plugins folder the next step is to rename the plugins folder back into its original form so we'd right click on the plugins underscore backup we'd say rename and then we take out the backup with the underscore so then we just make sure that the name of the folder is now just called plugins with everything being lowercase now we have to go through the painful exercise of finding exactly which plugin it is but if you do it this way then you will know 100% that it's coming from one specific plugin okay so let's get started with that so now we go into the plugins folder and here's a list of all the plugins that we have on this website the same thing as we did with the plugins folder itself we now have to do with the plugins so now we're going to rename all these plugins with an underscore backup after it. So what happens is we're actually disabling that plugin from the website. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to click on this first one. I'm going to rename this. I'm going to put the underscore backup, rename. Now you can see that this particular plugin will now be disabled on the website. So now if the error is coming from that plugin, then we know that it's that one causing it and we can take up further actions. 
So let's go to the front end quickly and I'm going to reload it and see if the error happens. Okay, so now you can see that the error is still there and we haven't found the plugin just yet. So let's go back into our plugins folder over here and now we're going to rename the next one. And now we're going to click on rename. We're going to leave the original name, obviously, and I'm just going to say underscore backup. We go into the front end again, we reload. So you can see here that the error is still happening. So we're gonna carry on doing this until we find the right plugin that's causing the error here on the website. Now I know this is a very long process, but once you find the plugin, eventually the website will kick in and you'll notice that exact plugin that is causing the issue. Within this video, I know exactly which plugin is causing it because I created the error to show you guys how to troubleshoot finding this fatal error in the first place. So I know that you have to go down this whole list of plugins and you have to rename them with the underscore backup. Eventually going to get to the plugin that's causing the error so with me in this example i know it's this particular one here which is power pack elements if i rename this one to underscore backup so if i go into the front and i reload you can see that the website started to work again although not perfectly because there's a lot of plugins disabled but now we have access into the wordpress website so what we do now is we'd go back into the back end of our website and what we can do over here is rename all the plugins that we modified back into the original name so here this advanced database cleaner i would rename it back to its original form and i do the same thing with the next two okay so now that i've renamed all the plugins back into the original form except for the one that's giving a problem i'm going to go to the front end of my website just to make sure that this is the plugin and then we're going to take further steps after that so here's the front end of my website i'm just going to reload it quickly just to test okay so now we can see that, that plugin was definitely the one that was causing the fatal error our next step is we have to remove the plugin and reinstall a fresh copy of it okay so how we're going to do that in a safe way is we're going to take that plugin that's causing it we're going to right click on it and we're just going to make a backup of it and in this case i'm just going to make a compressed zip file of it click on zip and say compress now that i made a copy of that old plugin now it's safe to delete it so here i'm going to right click on it the one that has that underscore backup i'm going to say delete okay so now that it's been deleted from our system our next step is to log into wordpress and we're going to reinstall that plugin again so here in the back end of our wordpress website what we do is we go into plugins we're going to say add new in my case, because it was a power pack element and I have a copy of that on my computer, all I'd have to do is say upload plugin and then just load up the zip file and I can install it quickly from my desktop. So wherever you got your plugin that was given the issue, just download it again from that website. Okay, so now that our plugin has been installed and updated, we just have to make sure that it's enabled. Here we can see that power pack pro is enabled. And then we can test the front end of our website just to double check that it's still working. And as you can see, the, the website is now working again with the fresh copy of that plugin that was giving us an issue. Our final step is now we can safely delete that zip file backup that we had made on our server. So if you are in the back end, as you can see, here's that zip file I had made as a backup just in case. And I can safely delete this knowing that I don't need it anymore. Okay, and that's it. That's your website working again. Now, just remember, if it wasn't a plugin, there was definitely going to be a theme that was causing it, then you follow along with the same process. You'd make a backup of the folder, and then you would reload a fresh copy of the theme. So don't forget to like and subscribe, because that stuff really does help my channel a lot. So if you have any questions or anything, then just leave a comment down below, and let me see how I can help you out with that. And with that, I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.